All right, so I need to make this video to address um, some critics of the Lordship Salvation video that I did. Um, so I made that video a while ago, and it's the most controversial, most watched video on my channel, hands down. And uh, there's a reason for that, because it made a lot of fundies mad. It made a lot of these independent fundamental Baptists mad. Why did it make them mad? Because I completely nailed their false doctrine, their false gospel. And they don't like that. But the reason I want to make this video is because I'll talk to um, some, of the, some of you out there that have watched that video. I know you're going to watch this. Okay, and let me d address you directly. You are people who have, and these are specifically for people who watch the video and then leave a ton of comments under there um, making criticisms about it that are n not, not true whatsoever. What do I mean by that? You're liars. You are liars. I have never encountered people who are this obsessive and um, to just as soon as they hop on the video, they comment after comment after comment after comment, and they're taking, putting words in my mouth, twisting things, lying so bad. Okay, so what are, what are some of the lies? I just wanted to address a few of these points because it's pretty much the same points over and over and over again. Um, and these are all points that I covered in the video, all of them, okay? First of all, let me just break this down for you. The first half of the video goes over the history of the Lordship Salvation controversy, okay? If you haven't watched this Lordship Salvation video, I made one a while back about um, Lordship Salvation or Divided Christ. So you go back and watch that video and you'll see what I'm talking about. But the first half of the video is the history of the controversy, and in that Part of the history, I simply documented the fact that the main in the uh, mainstream battle about this subject was John MacArthur was fighting against some of these, um, you know, easy believism type people like Zane Hodges and um, a, you know a bunch of other people. And I I specifically said in the video, this is one of the criticisms. I specifically said in the video. I do not agree with John MacArthur on a lot of things. I don't agree with him about his definition of the blood of Christ. He says it's just symbolic of Christ's death. I think that's wrong. I think that's heresy, honestly. That's, that's pretty bad. He said things like, you can take the mark of the beast and then repent of it after. I think that's garbage. That's very dangerous. His, his um, views of Romans 13 submitting to government... I don't agree with his Calvinism. I, I don't agree with him about his modern versions. I disagree with him with, about so many things. And I made that clear in the video. Yet, somehow you people have the gall to write in the comments, Oh, you're quoting John MacArthur? That guy's a heretic. Blah, blah, blah. Really? Even though I said that in the video... I said I don't agree with him all these things. You, you, you're still going to put that there. Why are you going to do that? Because what you're doing is you're trying to grasp onto anything that you can to try to attack me with because you're upset that I'm destroying your false doctrine. You absolutely hate it. And so you try to find anything you can to, to use as a weapon to swing against me. And guess what? It ain't working. And I got some more. So some other... Uh, criticisms that people say the same things over and over again here's the false accusations which i answered in the video they say you're saying uh people need to clean up their lives and stop sinning and make jesus the lord of their life in order to be saved no absolutely wrong i never said that in fact i specifically said in the video i am not saying you have to stop sinning to be saved that's a false gospel. Repentance is turning. Oh, we, all right. We're going to deal with the word repentance here, okay? Listen. Repentance doesn't save you. It's faith in Christ that saves you. But repentance is tied in directly with faith, okay? The Bible says repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. They're two sides of the same coin. You have to have both, okay? Let's look at this. Repentance is turning from sin as Lord to Jesus as Lord. That's what repentance is. There it is. Okay? Now, what I did not say is 
that it means stop all your sin and then you can be saved. That's not what I said. Don't try to tell me that's what I said because that's not what I said. Okay? That's work salvation. No one can be saved. First of all, it's impossible to stop sinning. Okay? We got that. All right. Now, in addition to that, it's impo it, you cannot be saved by trying to stop sinning. Okay? And getting all sin out of your life. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about a turning of the heart away from a life of sin that you've been living. Your Lord has been sin and Satan and the world. You turn from that in your heart and say, I don't want that anymore. I'm sorry because I've offended God. I hate that I have sinned because I've sinned against God. I've been living this life. And now I want to turn from that life and I want to turn to Jesus Christ and have the new life in Christ. I want to put my faith in him. That's what repentance is. And it's in the heart. Okay? Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. I'm not saying that you are saved by doing good works. That's a false gospel. I have multiple teachings refuting that, showing that that's not how you get saved. That's a work salvation. I'm against it. You don't have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You come to Jesus and you surrender. You surrender to him. You put up a white flag of surrender. I'm, I'm not going to fight against you anymore. That's not doing any works. You're just saying, I'm done. I'm done being a rebel. I'm done fighting against you. You're not doing anything to clean up your life. You're coming to the cross as a wicked sinner. I came to the cross as a wicked sinner, as a drunkard and a drug addict and a death metal singer and all these other things. And I got saved at, while I was those things and then God changed me. Yeah, you don't have to stop sinning to be saved. I clearly said that multiple times. Okay, and then the next false accusation is, oh, well, you're saying then after you're saved that you're going to be sinless. I never said that. In fact, I specifically said in the video, once you get saved, you're not going to be sinless. Christians sin. And I said it multiple times. A Christian will sin. Okay, they still have the flesh. That's a fact of the Bible. But the, 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 here, the clincher here, and if you go watch my video, Babe in Christ versus a False Convert, is that a Christian, the difference is when someone's saved and they sin, they will be convicted of their sin, they will be sorry that they sinned against God, confess, say, God, I'm sorry I sinned against you, and they will uh, be chastened of God, and they'll, and they'll, and they'll uh, get up and strive to obey God again. That's what a Christian does. But you have to grasp onto a Christian will sin. They will sin. They will sin. And you like to say, what about Lot? And what about the Corinthians? And what about all these people? And you try to look for all these examples because you're so carnal and you love your sin and your rebellion so much that you have to find the lowest example, set the bar as low as you can, to desperately find justifications and excuses for your sin. That's wicked. It's extremely wicked. And you people are wicked. I'll tell you right that. I'll tell you right now. Okay? If anyone doesn't tell you that in your life, I'm telling you right now, you're wicked. And if you don't repent and believe the real gospel, you're going to bust hell wide open. That's the best thing I could ever say to you. Because I have never met people like you, who twist the scriptures that badly, except maybe cults like Jehovah's Witnesses. It's that bad. Okay? And another thing, I never said you have to, after you're saved, you have to keep doing good works or you'll lose your salvation or you can't sin or you'll lose your I never said that. I do not teach you can lose your salvation once you're saved. Never said you can lose your salvation. Never. And I will never teach that. You cannot lose your salvation. If you're born again, you're born again. You're saved forever, for eternity. For one, By one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You're perfected forever. You're saved. Okay? 
Uh, so all those accusations are false, completely false. Okay? And here's the reality of it. Here's the bottom line. You don't like that I called you out and I refuted you. Okay? So like I said earlier, the first half of the show is a history of the Lordship Salvation Controversy. And then the next half of the show is a Bible study where we really get into it and break down all the verses about Lordship Salvation, about Jesus being Lord, and all these other types of things. And we show what the Bible clearly teaches. And the Bible clearly refutes what the, these anti-Lordship fundamentalists teach. The IFBs refutes them. And they're so mad that they obsessively comment and thumbs down and attack and foam at the mouth because they can't answer it. And, and you know what happens when people can't answer it? They just repeat the same things over and over again. You all say the same thing. And, and, and they also falsely accuse. And they do um, you know, ad hominem attacks. They'll try to attack your character and, and, and just put words in your mouth and all these other types of things. Instead of point by point, Refute what I said in the video video because I refuted it all. You tried to use the examples of Lot and Noah getting drunk and David and all these other things. I refuted all of it. That's why you're so mad. Because it's completely refuted with the Bible. And now you have no excuse for your sin. You have no cloak for your sin. And you know what happens when people don't have a cloak for their sin? They get mad. They flip out and they attack you. That's right. Well, guess what? You have no excuse. You have no excuse. And you know what's a better idea? How about instead of lying, lying about me, lying about my video, coming up with false accusations, obsessively watching and commenting on things that you don't even like? How about instead of that, you say, hey, wow, Maybe I should take a look at my life here and see that maybe I'm lost. And maybe you should repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ so that you can really be born again. And maybe the real issue here is it makes you so mad because you've been sold a bill of goods. You've been sold a false gospel that doesn't change you and you were comfortable in your sin for a long time and then someone came along and took you out of that comfort zone and it made you mad. Well, instead of getting mad, why don't you receive the truth with humility and consider the fact that you might be wrong? But I think deep down you know that you're wrong and you're just grasping as much as you can onto the, these absolutely foolish, shallow arguments and out of context twisted scriptures, you're just grasping onto them to justify your life of sin. That's why you say, oh, a Christian can live in a barren wasteland of defeat with no fruit for their whole life. Why do you argue for that? Is it because that's what your life is like? It, because Christians can live in complete carnality. Why is it? Because you live in complete carnality and you don't repent and you're not convicted and chastened when you sin and you strive to obey God and to try to be holy. Is, it, is that why you're fighting so hard? What kind of Christian would fight this hard against someone saying that we should submit to Jesus as Lord as Christians? And that we should strive to obey him because we love him because he died for our sins? What kind of Christian would fight against that? What kind of Christian would fight so passionately to defend living in sin and to defend and, and find all the little parts in the Bible where the, the heroes of faith sinned and say that's the standard that they want to shoot for? Well, if they sinned, then it's okay for me while they completely ignore all the consequences for their sin. Well, if you want to commit adultery with David, get ready to have the sword never depart from your house like David, have all these bad things happen, have the kingdom taken away from you from your own son, and all these other things. You can have that too, if that's the, that's the life you want. And you, if you want to be like Lot, okay, you can be like Lot. 
And then you can have your wife go turn go to hell. And your daughters get you drunk to commit incest and go to hell and become the, the mothers of heathen nations. And have everyone around you go to hell. Go ahead. You can do that. That's the standard. That's the bar you want to shoot for. Go ahead and you do it. But that's not what a, a born-again Christian should be striving for. Okay? So, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I think that you, most of you are lost. You're just lost. You, you, you believe a false gospel that does not regenerate someone. There, you are not born again. You've never been changed. Because if you have been changed, you have put, really put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will know it. You will see the change and you will know that the truth that I talked about in that video is true. It's biblical. The only reason you fight against it is because you don't want that to be true. Because it indicts you. It convicts you. Okay? So you, can, you got two options when you get convicted. Repent or attack the messenger. And you're attacking the messenger. Okay? Listen, I, I didn't do anything to you. I can't, I can't send you to hell. <laughs> okay? I can't send you to hell. You send yourself to hell. I'm just preaching what the Bible says. Believe it or reject it. That's it. Okay? So, just wanted to make that video, this video, to um, answer some of those common criticisms because they keep coming up over and over and over again. Um, uh not going to back down. I'm going to keep preaching the truth. Jesus is Lord. And it's a false gospel for you to teach that you can accept Jesus as Savior and not as Lord. You can't accept, you can't divide Jesus up and accept part of him. Well, I'll, I'll accept the forgiveness of sins, but I don't want to obey him. The Bible says he is the, became the author of, of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus said. Accept it or reject it. All right, that's it. Let the attacks roll on in. I will just block you right off my page. <laughs> if, you really, if you really want to uh, talk to me, I'm open for that. I'm open for criticism. Okay, I just want to let you know. If you have genuine questions and if you have a genuine criticism and you say, hey, you made this point about this verse and you said this, you know, what about this? I'll answer you. But if you come on here railing and, and falsely accusing and clearly saying things that I already answered in the video, I'm not going to answer you. I'm just going to kick you right out. Oh, free speech. You don't have free. You have free speech. Go on your YouTube channel. Make a video about it. I don't care, but not in my comments. Okay? Thank you. God bless. Have a good day.